Welcome back to the new Pokemon type series. The series where I take a deep dive at possible Pokemon types to see if they would work or if they wouldn't work and if they fall somewhere in between that. This episode we will be discussing the light type. However, I'm sure you've picked up from the intro that this is not the first episode. The previous episode of this was covering the sound type. If you haven't watched that, not to worry, these episodes are built as a standalone. However, I do go over some basic premises of how the series works in that first First episode, so you should probably watch that now if you're planning on watching that anyways. That way I don't have to explain things over and over again. But without further ado, let's jump into the light type, which is probably the most overall requested type throughout the history of the series, and that's mainly due to the introduction of the dark type back in Generation 2. People were wondering why there wasn't really a light type counterpart. Now personally, nowadays I would say that the sound type is actually the most requested type, and that's mainly because because the fairy type. What do I mean by this? Well, a lot of people seem to think that the fairy type is basically the light type, and it's basically filling the role of the light type, and there is no way that it's going to be added to the game. Done, dusted, nothing's gonna happen with the light type. Now, that's an argument I've seen made quite a bit, and personally, I think it's really the wrong way to look at the light type. People are looking at the light type as the good type, whereas really, it should be the light type. I mean, just stop and think about it. How many Pokemon out there are light-based, but wouldn't really fit as a fairy? I mean, spoiler alert for an upcoming section, you've got Ampharos, literally the light Pokemon, and it's not a fairy type. It certainly wouldn't fit as a fairy, but it fits perfectly as a light type. And that will segue into the first section. Of course, if you're familiar with this series, you would know that this is the retyped Pokemon section. So in this one, we will further break it down into three subcategories. The definite picks, possible picks, and unlikely picks. First up, the definite picks, and there are actually quite a few of them. Starting out, we have the two Firefly-based Pokemon, Volbeat and Illumise. Obviously going from pure bugs to bug and light type. Next up would be Chinchou and Lantern. It's rather obvious, it's in the name as well, Lantern, and they are based off of deep sea anglerfish, which use light to hunt. So it makes absolutely perfect sense that these Pokemon would become both water and light type. Mareep, Flaffy, Ampharos, and Mega Ampharos all make great light type candidates as well, mainly because their Pokedex entries do specify that they do produce quite a lot of light, mainly around Ampharos, which again, is literally the light Pokemon, and that's what it's classified as. So I think a good typing for this would be a light and electric type. So this would mean that light actually becomes the primary type instead of the secondary type. This is also so the Mega Evolution can become a light and dragon type, which I think would be a pretty cool combination. Zergatry is up next, and with that giant glowing star-shaped lightning bolt bulb thing on its head, I'd say it makes a pretty good fit as a light type, but also it's also one of the few Ultra Beasts that only have a single type, so it also kind of makes more sense that it gets a secondary type. I don't know, I guess it could be argued that this should fit a little better in the possible picks category, but I think personally, to me anyway, it fits in a definite spot. Next up are ones that I don't think I've ever seen people classify as a light type, at least in their fan-made sections of their own, and that would be Patrat and Watchhog becoming a normal and light type. Yes, I see you scratch your head, and it's kind of understandable, they're pretty forgettable Pokemon. But if you didn't know, the actual safety vest patterns on them do light up. They glow, and that's kind of what they use to hypnotize people and signal to others of the species that there is an issue. So I don't know about you, but I think it would be good to have a part light type that's very common and sort of early in the game, though I'm sure that would also happen if they made light a proper type, they would sort of introduce lower tier early root, if you want to call them, Pokemon of their own. But yeah, anyway, moving on to Soul Rock, which turns from a rock and psychic type to a cosmic and light type. Yes, I will say, just in case you did miss the last episode, there will be hints and little bits and pieces of upcoming episodes 
episodes we will be doing. So, Cosmic is going to be another type we're covering, and hence why it is here in this series. I mean, it's a meteoroid type Pokemon that's kind of in the shape of a star, and it's based off of the sun, so light? I mean, it could be argued that it could also be fire as well, but personally, I think Cosmic Light would be a pretty cool combo. And maybe give it some sort of ability, like a rock skin ability that gives it the resistances and weaknesses of rock. Incorporating rock into it somehow? I don't know. This one could be up for a bit more of debate, but I think, again, Cosmic Light would be a cool combo here. Speaking of cool, we have some legendary Pokemon. And those would be Cosmog, Cosmoam, Solgaleo, and Lunala. And they would be Light, Light, Light Steel, and Light Ghost, respectively. It could be argued that they could also possibly be Cosmic as well, and you're probably wondering why I didn't make Cosmog and Cosmoam Light and Cosmic as well? Well, mainly because I didn't want to have them be Light and Cosmic and then turn into a Light and Steel and Light and Ghost, sort of losing their cool Cosmic typing in place of the Steel and Ghost type, which plays into a lot of their signature moves as well as the rest of their moveset. I think that would be too drastic of a change, especially for a legendary Pokemon. Or at the very least, these Pokemon, in my mind, fit better as still Light Steel and Light Ghost. Because if they both became Light Cosmic, that would really make them kind of the same? A little bit too samey, if you ask me. And plus, those two combos, Light and Steel and Light and Ghost, would be pretty awesome types on their own regard. Next up, we have the Big Bad, Necrozma and Ultra Necrozma. Going from a pure psychic type to a light and crystal type, again, another type we will be covering down the road, and the Ultra Form, which is now a light and dragon type. And I don't know about you, but I cannot picture a another Pokemon more fitting of the light type than the literal light dragon itself, Ultra Necrozma. Like, take a look at that thing. Tell me that is not the perfect embodiment of a light type. And again, light not being the good type, but literally the light type. And finally, stepping down from all that awesomeness to Finion and Luminion. We have a water and light type because, you know, Luminion, luminous, makes sense, right? Moving on from there, we come to the possible picks category. And this one contains a lot less. However, there's still good choices in their own right. And those would be Xerneas, gaining the light type from a pure fairy. We have Sunflora, the sunflower Pokemon, becoming a grass and light type. Cresselia, the Pokemon that uses the light of the moon, becoming a psychic Psychic and Light type, and then Helioptile and Heliolisk becoming Electric and Light. Again, another very fitting type, albeit yet another Light Electric type, I know, but they are based on solar panels, especially Heliolisk, so I'd say that makes perfect sense. And then the unlikely picks, the ones that are a little bit too far away, but they do have a slight chance of becoming Light type. They could do some pretty cool things with them, possibly. And those would be Inca and Malamar becoming a dark and light type. A pretty cool, almost contradicting type there. At least from what I have planned in the type matchup section. And then Amora and Aurorus becoming a light and ice type. I mean, it fits perfectly. They are the Aurora Borealis Pokemon, but they are also fossils. So pretty unlikely that they will ever actually lose their rock typing, but it would still fit pretty well. If they ever did like a pure revival technique for fossils, I definitely could see them becoming a light and ice type. So there we have it. And that would bring our total to 29. And this would be 20 definite picks, 5 possible picks, and 4 unlikely picks. Hopefully most of you are happy with my choices, but if you have any thoughts and opinions on which ones you would add or take away, let me know in the comment section down below. And with that, we can now move on to the type interactions. As always, we will be covering these in alphabetical order, and also incorporating the other types in the series into this list. So with that, we will start with the bug type. Many species of flying insects have evolved a behavior known as transverse orientation. Put simply, the insect uses a distant light source for navigation, basically letting them fly towards a constant angle, but never actually reaching it. Obviously, this worked fine when the moon was the brightest thing in the sky, since, like I said, insects could fly towards it, but they could never possibly hope to reach it. 
Nowadays, however, this doesn't work so well. I mean, just step outside your front door at night and you'll see exactly why. Additionally, other bugs are heliophobic and or prefer to live underground. A queen ant is a good example of this. After they've successfully mated, they lose their wings and develop heliophobia. I guess you could say this is kind of a weird biological kick in the pants to say, hey, do your job as a queen. You wanna look at it that way, I guess. But yeah, because of all of this, perhaps it could mean that the bug type is weak to light type attacks, although the light type wouldn't resist any bug moves. The cosmic type. I'm sure you all know about black holes and how their gravitational pull is so strong that not even light can escape it. On top of this, space itself is full of deadly UV radiation from stars, meaning that cosmic type Pokemon would be used to it. So perhaps cosmic types would have no trouble at all taking light type moves. And going back to the whole black hole thing, perhaps they would deal super effective damage also. Crystal, refraction is a perfect fit for this interaction. If you don't know, refraction is the bending or deflection of light, usually done through glass or other crystals. This makes the crystal type perfect for tanking all of those light moves. The dark type. Darkness is the natural state of things. Wow, that sounds really depressing, actually. But, I mean, it's true. Energy must be released in order to create light, from stars, for example. And for this reason, I feel that dark types would be super effective against light types. However, in addition, I think light types would also hit back with super effective damage of their own, as where there is light, it is impossible possible to have darkness. Think of it as an eternal struggle of sorts. Dragon. Nothing much to say here, so uh, let's just move on. I got nothing. Electric. Electricity powers the lights of our modern city, and lightning can create large flashes of light themselves. However, perhaps this would be more of a backup option if balancing was needed, because there certainly is a possible fit, but I don't think it's quite as strong as some of the other reasonings. The fairy type. Sparkles and twinkles come to mind when I think of fairies, though I I still think a neutral interaction would be best here. Fighting. Uh, I don't know. Maybe you could blind somebody who's trying to get up close to you, but you could do that with any fighter, really. Doesn't have to be a fighting type. So, on that note, let's just make it a neutral interaction, shall we? Fire. Fires are already hot and bright, so resisting light type attacks seem like a no-brainer. The flying type. Uh, don't fly too close to the sun, maybe? I don't know, it's pretty loose. So, I guess just an interaction of the neutral variety, perhaps? Ghost. This is the ultimate scary story that parents tell their little ghost children. Are you afraid of the light? Okay, bad jokes aside, I think it's pretty obvious why ghost types would be weak to light type moves. The grass type. Plants get food from converting sunlight into energy. Or at least that's a very simple description of it. But yeah, because of that, resisting light types would be not a problem at all for grass type Pokemon. The ground type. Personally, I can't think of too much beside burying something underground to avoid sunlight. Uh, actually, that's not a bad idea. Covering a light source with thick mud, dirt, or sand would certainly not make it shine as bright, if at all. So, I guess ground types could possibly be super effective against light types, though they would just take normal damage from them. Ice type. Fun fact, Earth's ice caps are actually reflecting quite a lot of solar radiation off of the planet. This is due to the their near white color, as what you see as white is just simply the majority of visual wavelengths bouncing off of that material. And side note, for black, it's the total opposite. The wavelengths are being absorbed. But anyways, because of this, I would say that ice types would be perfectly fine going toe to toe with a light type opponent. And now to light itself. If you can produce super bright lights yourself, it would make sense that you wouldn't be able to blind yourself, or at least I would hope so. So I don't know about you, but personally I would say that light types would be unable to damage other light types. On to the magic type, though nothing really jumps out at me with this one. Maybe a blindness spell that gets rid of light? I don't know. I think that's a little loose. So, just a neutral interaction works perfectly fine here. Mushroom type. Mushrooms thrive in the darkness, so it's pretty obvious that they would be weak to light moves. Normal. I can't really think of much here. I guess some animals are nocturnal, but that's a pretty weak argument. What about poison? Well, 
nothing, really, so let's just move on. And Psychic! I'd say a neutral interaction works here best, because I can't really think of another good reason. So let's move on to the rock type. Now, this type makes me kind of think about caves or hiding under rocks, but that's not too solid of a connection. So what about sound types? Well, sound doesn't really have any interaction with light at all, as we covered in the sound type video, so exactly the same as we did there, a neutral interaction is for the best. Now, something that actually will have an interaction would be the steel type. So, a polished metal surface would simply reflect any light off of it, making a resistance make perfect sense. And then water type. Light has a very difficult time reaching the deep, dark depths of the ocean. However, that requires a lot of water. Also, water refracts light as well, at least to a certain extent. Not super strong reasoning, especially with the sheer amount of water you would need to block out light, and I don't think a Pokemon is able to produce an entire ocean's worth of water. However, it certainly could make for a good backup type if they needed something for balance reasons, but still have it be believable. And that, of course, is the last of the types we have to cover. So let's take a look at the type chart overall. First up, for the classic types, obviously including the light type, we have its offensive interactions being super effective against bug, dark, and ghost, Light moves would be resisted by fire, grass, ice, and steel types, and light moves would be unable to damage light types. As for defensive interactions, the light type would be weak to both dark and ground types. It would only resist ghost moves, however, it is immune to light as well. Now for the new type interactions, this is including all of the types we will be covering in this series. We have light moves being super effective against bug, dark, ghost, and now the inclusion of mushroom types. Types that resist light include cosmic, crystal, fire, grass, ice, and steel, and still they are unable to damage light types. Their weaknesses are now a lot more fleshed out, where they are now weak to cosmic attacks, crystal moves, dark moves, and ground moves. On top of this, they now resist mushroom on top of the ghost type. And of course, they're still immune to light itself. So, what do you think about all these interactions? Would you personally change anything? I think I've put a fair amount of research into it, and it seems to make sense to me. But of course, let me know your thoughts and opinions as well. But with that, let's move on to the next section. Inspiration for new Pokemon. This section shouldn't really need that much of an interaction. It's fairly straightforward. These are Pokemon that I feel would make fantastic inspirations for light-type Pokemon. And the first of these is based off of the New Zealand Glow Worm. These can be found in many damp caves all across New Zealand. And why I think these are so interesting is because Obviously, yes, it's in their name. They do glow, meaning that this would be a bug and light type. However, we do already have something like that. We already have a firefly. But the cool thing here is the way they hunt. And they actually use sticky strands of, believe it or not, urine. Yes, urine. To actually ensnare prey. They dangle these strands down from the roofs of the cave to maybe catch something that's a little bit unfortunate and flies below it. I don't know about you, but I think this would make for a perfect cave encounter Pokemon. Picture it in your mind. You're wandering into a cave. You don't really know too much about it. You see this weird thing dangling down from the ceiling. Oh, I guess that's just part of the train. Oh well, I'll just walk right past it and bam, an encounter starts with this Pokemon. I don't know, I think that would be pretty cool. Next up, a Pokemon based off of a bioluminescent mushroom. It's fairly obvious, it should be classified as a mushroom and light type Pokemon. However, if we're going with the classic types only plus light type itself, then it could be classified as a grass and light type. Not too much else to say here, I just think it's a very fitting concept. Next up would be a light and steel type Pokemon based on a street lamp. Now, like most things in Pokemon, it's very rarely ever just a street lamp. They usually utilize that thing in some sort of other way. Like, you know how a lot of street lamps are kind of curved over? Maybe they could make something that looks almost like a Grim Reaper, kind of. They sort of hold the street lamp as a scythe, kind of. Or maybe taking into account of how long street lamps could be, you could turn this into a almost snake or eel-like Pokemon. Or have it as some sort of wandering nomad that kind of holds this street lamp as kind of like a cane and crutch. Sort of like Drampa, how it's kind of like an old-looking Pokemon. This could be 
sort of like that. What I'm saying is a street lamp Pokemon doesn't literally just have to be a street lamp. So with three ways to take this possible inspiration, and hey, maybe more, I'd say it would make for a very interesting inspiration. Next up, a deep sea bioluminescent fish of some kind. Now, I guess we do have lantern as kind of a angler fish, but it's a little bit too happy for my taste. What I'm looking at is more of a dark and light type. It could be water and light as well, but I think we have enough of those. Dark and light would be pretty cool. And I mean, there are already a decent amount of non-water type Pokemon that actually live in the ocean. So it's not that that big of an issue if we don't make it a water type. Now, here's one that we kind of sort of went over in the last video, and that is another Rotom form. This time, Rotom Lamp. And of course, it would be an electric and light type. Now, here's one that is really, really cool. At least, I think so. It would make for a very, very awesome Pokemon, and it fits perfectly well. This would be a Pokemon based off of the Japanese myth, the Hitodama, or the Scottish myth, the Will o' the Wisp. Both of these are fairly similar in appearance, said to be ghostly white lights drifting throughout the forest, or wherever else they might decide to drift. And I don't know about you guys, but I would say that makes for a perfect light and ghost type Pokemon. Now, we kind of covered this concept a little bit back in the type section, but this one would be a Pokemon based off of light refracting crystals, and it would be, you guessed it, a crystal and light type Pokemon. But much like our glowing mushroom concept, if they only had the classic types plus the light type, this of course would become a rock and light type Pokemon, which I guess still would be a pretty cool type combination. And last, but certainly not least, this one is kind of a weird one, but a Pokemon based off of nuclear waste or sludge. I guess more of the sort of comical version of it, where it's kind of a big pool of glowing green liquid. Regardless of that, I still think this would be a very cool concept for a poison and light type. Those are but just a little taste of what I could come up with, I'm sure Game Freak could come up with a lot more, and maybe you could too. But out of my little selection here, I think my personal favorites would be either the Nuclear Waste one, the Hitodama slash Will o' the Wisp, as well as the Glow Worm, simply for the actual map interaction. Sort of the, the overworld interaction, I guess we can say. But now that means we can move on to our final section, the new and retyped moves. Starting us off with the retyped moves, we do have a decent selection here. Going through the list, we have Tail Glow, Spotlight, Flash, Barrier, and Light Screen. On top of that, similar to how we did it in the sound type video, we do have some possible multi-type moves. So, Signal Beam could become a move that deals both light and bug type damage, or simply just make it a light type move. As if you look at the description of it, really, it is just an attack using light. Next would be Dazzling Gleam. Could deal fairy or light type damage, or it could just simply remain a fairy type move. And last but not least, Flash Cannon. I think this would make sense still to deal steel and light type damage, as you're kind of using the mirrors on your body, almost, to shoot this light out. And then we come to the signature moves of Necrozma. These are definitely very light-based, almost like Game Freak knew that this was a light-based Pokémon, so they wouldn't give it psychic moves, they wanted to give it specifically light moves. Hmm, little conspiracy there, perhaps? But yes, we have Photon Geyser, dealing light damage. We've got Prismatic Laser, which could either just be a light type attack, or it could deal light and crystal damage. And then finally, we have the over-the-top name, Light That Burns the Sky, the Z-move for Ultra Necrozma. It is definitely a light-type attack. I think that should be all of the existing moves that could be retyped as a light-type, but if I missed anything, my apologies, there are a lot of Pokémon moves out there. How about some new moves, though? What have I come up with for this? Well, I've got a couple. And a lot of these actually incorporate the idea of light speed. How, you know, light is the fastest thing in the universe. So a move like Glitz Blitz could be a pretty interesting one. This would be a physical light type move with plus one priority, decent power. However, the drawback is that it doesn't have full accuracy. Another one would simply be light speed. Yes, I know, a very interesting name. Perhaps they could do something better with that. But this would be more of a supportive move. 
I've kind of incorporated a lot of support moves into this type, making it more of a helper rather than a fighter. And with this, it would boost the speed of you and your ally by one. But perhaps this would only have five power points to help balance it out. You couldn't really use it that often. Shimmer Strike? This one is all about blinding your opponents. So yet another physical light move but this has a chance to lower the target's accuracy. This move would be learnt by Pokemon that have an appendage they can swing around with the light on it. Think of Anfros, for example, who has the light on its tail. It could swing its tail around and flash its light. This would deal physical damage, like I said, and blind the target, or at least have a chance to lower their accuracy. The Dazzle is a move similar to Charge Beam. It's a special attack, but has a chance to raise the user's speed by one, again incorporating the idea of light speed into the light type. And going back to what I said about supportive moves, we have Shine Shield. This is essentially protect. However, the kicker here is you cannot protect yourself, but rather you protect your ally. It sounds like it could be very overpowered on paper. However, in practice, I don't think it would be quite as overpowered, but I could be wrong. And just like protect, it would fail if used in succession. They could do two routes with this. Either one, just simply have a giant ball of light shooting out from your ally. This would make it so attacks would pretty much almost always miss, to the point where it's basically as good as a physical shield, or at least that's the lore behind it anyway. Or they could go a other route and have it as solid light, which believe it or not is a thing. It is theoretically possible to have solid light, though I think option one would be a little bit better because as we went over with the retyped moves, barrier and light screen are already covering the solid light aspect of the light type. And one more that I couldn't quite fully flip out, but I believe something based off of illusion, or multiple moves based off the idea of illusions would be a cool idea for the light type. Sort of projecting light to make people think that something isn't really there. Maybe this could cause confusion, or get them to hit themselves, which I mean is already the confusion status effect, but maybe do it in a different way? I don't know. Again, I didn't fully flesh this one out. I couldn't quite think of something, but if you've got a couple ideas for what an illusion type move could look like, let me know. I'm very curious. So let's wrap this all up. Let's get out our scorecard and rate what the likelihood of this type being added to the game would be. Now, like I said in the beginning, there are a lot of things that I went over in the sound type video that kind of cover how I grade this. So if you haven't watched that, again, go and watch that now. This, of course, is just to kind of cut down on time. Now, retyped Pokemon. There were actually quite a large amount of them. So it is very safe to say that we should have a five out of five for this. There are a lot of Pokemon that fit very well as a light type. And with this perfect score, of course, we are getting a full two bonus points here. Type interactions. I would say that it works very well. There aren't really any kind of wishy-washy type interactions. Here. So a 5 out of 5 here as well would work rather well. Possible future inspirations. Now this one is where it starts to drop off a little bit, as really there aren't that many animals that exist with bioluminescence. That's really the only way you're going to actually get a light animal, and without that you would really have to rely on a lot of other inanimate objects. Now again, nothing wrong with inanimate object Pokemon, don't get me wrong, but this does severely limit the amount of possible possible light types there could be. It's certainly not impossible, and as we've gone over, there are a lot of very good candidates for light type Pokemon in the future, but overall I would say possible future inspiration would get a 3 out of 5. Pretty good, but not outstanding. And finally, the moves. As we went over, there are a decent amount of retyped moves, but certainly nowhere near as many as the sound type. There were so many in fact that I didn't actually cover them individually. It would have taken way too long. And as far as new move inspirations go, there are, yes, a good amount of them. However, I feel that a lot of them really rely on three things. Illusions, light speed, and blinding the opponent. And I guess solid light as well. Is that enough to flush out this type? Yes, I would say so. It's certainly possible, but definitely not quite as good as the sound type. And because of this, I would give the light type 
a 4 out of 5 for moves. With all of the points tallied up, this brings our total likelihood for the light type as a 17 out of 20. But incorporating our bonus points, this means it is a 19 and a half out of 20, meaning the very important retyped Pokemon does bring it up quite a bit. The biggest thing with it though is the possible future inspiration. That's kind of what's dragging it down. Besides that though, it's a very solid contender for a new Pokemon type. Game Freak has a lot to work with here. There already is a sizable amount of things existing in the game that could be retyped to light types, whether that be Pokemon or moves. But what do you think about all of this? Did I score this properly? Do you like how I did the moves? Do you like how I did the Pokemon? Etc, etc. All of your feedback is very important. And of course, if you would like to see the next episode, I believe I will most likely be doing the Cosmic type, make sure you subscribe. Hit that like button, hit the bell, and do all the other stuff. Oh, and of course, share this video around. You might not think it's really that important, but trust me, it is very, very important. And also, maybe you're watching this in the future, so possibly the Cosmic type video is out. Maybe the entire series is out. So, if that's the case, maybe check out my channel. Alright, so that's enough of that. With that, I of course have been the Awesome Soul. I thank you all so very much for watching. I'll see you next time. Take care.